As an engineer, why should you care about your communication skills? Well, communication is the great equalizer. And when it comes down to it, your emotional and social intelligence are equally important as your communication skills. Your communication skills are incredibly important in a group or corporate environment, and your emotional and social intelligence plays into all of this. So EQ and SQ, emotional and social intelligence, are very important, and your ability to communicate your ideas is only held back by your creativity and your communication skills. Have you seen someone in your organization that has very impressive communication skills? And you question, oh, I'm never gonna get to that person's level. I'm never gonna be able to articulate myself as good as them. How did they get to that level? Well, there's very few people born with world-class talents. So if someone has some skill that you really like, they probably just started well before you did and spent thousands of hours getting better at it. So it's not like this person was naturally a communication god. No, not at all. They probably have just thrown 10,000 hours at it and outworking people with the small amount of innate talent that they might have is the way that you get better at anything. You're going to need to get the reps in. And this is something where you can go look back at your university days. So if you're an engineer, go think back to school. Working on your communication skills with the same fervor you had for your university studies is a great mindset shift that you should have right now. This is gonna help you to sharpen your skills much faster than if you just didn't care about them. So I want you to have snappier, more concise emails. I want you to have more concise ways to express yourself when it comes to emotional topics. So you can say, wow, this is a very frustrating process. How can we make this better? Or wow, this is this is firing me up. How can we fix this process? Whatever, whatever the thing is. You need to be able to understand your emotions better and then to articulate your technical or emotional message more effectively. On the subject of email, you never know where your email is going to be forwarded to. So never write what you can say and never say what you can mine. I'm not trying to say you're trying to do anything nefarious here. I'm just saying be careful because things can get forwarded on. So if you're learning how to be better at communicating, perhaps you should do that in a place where there's less pressure. You shouldn't be pushing the boundaries very much at work. You should be staying well within the professional bounds of common courtesy and things. You just need to work on being more concise and getting your message across in less words and understanding your audience better. So when you're communicating, you really need to understand who are you talking to and what do they actually care about? So if I'm in engineering and I need to procure something, right? We'll use a recent example. I need to procure a pretty specific thing. Now I'm talking to a supply chain person. It's like, I need to buy this very specific thing for this very specific reason. Now the supply chain person, they might wanna be like, all right, well, we can get something else that looks like very similar, but it's half the price. No, the drawing calls out this specific thing. We need to buy this specific thing. So with this, I had to go and say, all right, this is a supply chain person. I want to procure something from a specific place and a specific part. Okay, I'm gonna to go to them with, that's, that's the goal. So now in my interactions, I had to do my message by email saying, hey, we need to buy this from this place. How can you help us facilitate that? Now I've basically given them my ask as well as all the background they should need to help facilitate this communication and this effort. They really appreciate this because they don't have to have five emails back and forth for information I could have given them up front. See, so this is a situation where I've already had to deal with some of these people and I have tuned my communication style to the point where I probably could even have a template saved. So if you have someone new coming into your group, I run a very small office, it's very easy to keep templates. So if we have a routine thing, we send something off to get repaired, it comes back. We have specific templates, super easy, and then you don't even have to think about it. So the communication's already there. It already has a distribution list and consistent message. It contains all the information required. There shouldn't be any questions. It could be that easy. And that took a couple iterations for me to tune that message to the point where it was so repeatable that I don't even need to think about it anymore. But that doesn't mean that that message is now somehow not as good as it was before. No, the message is nice, concise, clear, and repeatable, which is great if that's what the effort calls for. So when it comes to having silver bullets and coming up with things like this, I don't have a silver bullet for you, but take my examples that I've just given you and maybe think about how you could apply some of them to your work communications and how you could work to better facilitate getting more done 
in less time. I trust you've been paying attention to this social intelligence video thus far. I want to help you pay even better attention to your emotional and social intelligence by clicking the link below this video and scheduling a free call with me. On the call, we'll come up with a personalized plan for you to start getting bigger raises, faster promotions, and stronger relationships with everyone around you. Don't delay. Click that link below and schedule a call with me today.